uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and it is incredibly important and that I express my views on this, and my views as reflecting also the views overwhelmingly in country areas, the, world, the, the views expressed overwhelmingly by people who have come down to Canberra uh, away from their work, away from their capacity to go out and earn a dollar, because they know full well this is about their livelihood and their future. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, I don't have to explain my position again because my position is the same as it was at four past ten on the 20th of March 2012 when I voted against this, and, it, and my position remains the same. I'm going to do my very best today to be part of a process of making sure that uh, we repeal this, we get rid of this tribunal. Because let's not for one second believe that we do not have concern about safety. Of course we do. This is nothing about safety. This is everything about creating a funnel, or this is what has happened to it. It's created a funnel to take owner drivers out of work and to put uh, other people in their jobs. And you know, good luck and God bless the Transport Workers Union. Good on them. But it is not their right to be part of a process that drives other people out of work. And that is what is happening here. And the people we see at the front of this building today and the people I saw at the, the rally in Tamworth are good people, decent people, law-abiding citizens. There are people trying to make a buck, people trying to make sure that they have the capacity to pay for their families and to give themselves an opportunity, an opportunity that is available to someone who might not have had the best education, who might not have had the uh, capacity to be born with, uh, with you know, as lucky as others, with the wealth of others, but have decided by the sweat of their own brow to try and get ahead in life. And we need to support that because that is the dream that so many Australians hold. But it is epitomised by what you see on the road when you see trucks moving. When I see trucks moving, Mr Deputy Speaker, I know that that is the sound of an economy moving. That's the, so that's the sound of produce moving. That's the sound of cattle moving around, sheep moving around, cotton moving around, coal moving around, iron ore moving around, produce going um, into the supermarkets for people to buy. It's the sound of an economy. And we've got to make sure that that sound of an economy keeps going. Owner drivers, and it's not just about the mum and dad operators who are the, overwhelmingly the owner drivers. The dad in the rig, the mum looking after the books. As an accountant, uh, I've never been, I've, I don't have a heavy vehicle licence? My wife does. My wife does. Um, my wife does. I, and, and, um, you know, and I think that the Labor Party today, I'll take that interjection, they should be wise enough and, uh, and honourable enough to say this has not worked out the way even I, I suspect at the start you thought it would work out. It, is, would be, it would be disgraceful to think today that you would stand by a decision which is obviously hurting people. Why would you do that? A decision initially made by the Labor Party, the Greens, and especially uh, an independent, Mr Windsor, he backed it as well. Mr Oakeshott, I have to give him his due, he did not vote for this. He did not vote for this. Mr Windsor did. Um, but it's not just the owner drivers, it's not just the mum and dad operators. It's also uh, the tyre fitters. Uh, as an accountant, I'd see them. There's a, a whole heap of money that goes to tyre fitters who are reason of owner drivers, trying to, to keep them on the road. It's the mechanics, it's the fuel bill, it's the truck sales, um, it's, it's, it's basically all the sections of small economies. You can go to a little town, even a little town like Wobbegar, and there's one thing you'll find there, you'll find an owner-operator, an owner-operator with his rigs. He's also the source of employment for a lot of people around the area. If you try to pick up a load um, from some of the remote areas, if you're going to pick it up from the back of Yulo, or if you're going to go to the uh, back of Barrigan, or if you're going to go into the hills behind Weabonga, or up into Emmerville, then guess who's going to pick up the load? Guess who's going to pick up your cattle? It'll be an owner-operator. An owner-operator is the one who will turn up there um, with their truck to get your produce to a sale, to keep that family on the land going, to keep that truck operator going, to keep the people who supply that truck operator going, to keep our economy going. And before they even start, these owner-operators have got substantial bills to make. You had lease payments, on average, that would be around about $6,000 for 
a, a decent rig. If you're going to one of the news, you go you know, Kenworth uh, T909. It's probably more than that. Uh, so you got about six, seven thousand dollars in payments before you even pass a go. But of course, you got to pay your registration. It's about thirty grand a year, so there's another two and a half thousand dollars a month you need for that. Before you even pass go, you've got to get your insurance paid. There's about twelve thousand dollars there, so there's another thousand dollars in bits and pieces. You're not shy of ten grand before you even start, before you even pick up a load. And what this legislation has done now, it means they can't pick up a load. And I'll tell you why. Because on your backloads, you're basically in, the, in, the, in very rough form. Your backloads have to be about the equivalent cost or the equivalent charge out of your forward loads. So if I pick up a load uh, at Tamworth and run them down, run it up to I don't know, run it up to down to Thomas Thomas Foods in, in Adelaide. So we pick up uh, six, 60, 60 steers or something, run them down there before five thousand dollars, five maybe five six thousand dollars, and that's the price we're going down now. That means that you live in Tamworth, but your rig is in Adelaide. You've got to get it home. You can't live there. It's only so long you want to live in your cabin for. You've got to turn around and get home. It doesn't matter what happens. It's not safe to say, well, you can't pick up anything on the way back. But if you go to say, oh, I can pick up a couple of bulls and run them back up, at least I'll pay for a bit of my fuel. I'll be able to help myself out a bit and pay for some of my costs to get back to Tamworth. You can't do it under this legislation. Oh, you can do it, but the rate you charge means that the person is no way in a, there's no way on earth they'll pay for what you have to charge them to run that smaller load, or maybe it's a couple of pallets you pick up, a couple of pallets of beer or something to pick up to run back. You've got to, the rate you've got to charge puts you out of the market. So what do you do? You still got to get your rig home, you get your rig home, but you don't get any money for it. So you're obviously, on both instances, you're driving yourself out of business. Now, this is absurd because the problem is other people can do it. The bigger operators can do it. The operators, to be quite up frank, where the Transport Workers Union are the members driving the rigs. They get to do it. And this is just completely and utterly at odds with what our nation is supposed to be about. Let's compete on fair terms. If you want to talk about fairness, let's have these people competing on fair terms, not driving the mum and dad owner-operators who are doing what we believe in an economy a person should be able to do. Start and with the sweat of their own brow, um, go through the economic and social stratification of life to find their, themselves in the best possible position, the highest level of freedom, to be masters of their own ship, that is, masters of their own rig, to, uh, to basically wear their uniform and to pay for their house and to be, have the greatest control over their own future. And they work so hard and they're happy to do it. But today they're not working. They're down here and they shouldn't have to be down here. They shouldn't have to be basically having to spend their time and their money and their efforts. Some of them came down today from Rockhampton because they know that this has got to be changed and they've got to keep the pressure on people to change it. Now, the other thing I can assure you is that when people start running out of money, um, the safety issues you want them to, to control are not, are not going to be controlled. You're changing over your tyres to deal with the wear and tear, um, you're going through your kingpin, you're going through all the issues, your brake lines. Um, these are assisted by keeping people financially viable by allowing them to pick up loads, not by keeping them in a corner and restricting them for getting access. And so the people we think about it, whether it's the, the Welshers, the Katingle or the Crookshanks or the Harrisons that I knew up at St George or Stockmaster at Tamworth or Lorries I end at Manila or the purple person who used to pick up a lot of our cattle, Bullier Johnson out of Surratt. Uh, these are the people that are so fundamentally part of our towns and fundamentally we have to make sure that we look after them. Uh, so it's going to be interesting also today because we've got to we'll, we'll get with this deal, deal with this issue as quickly as possible. I know it looks like the Labor Party there. They're standing by this, this, this piece of legislation. Why? I don't know why. But it'll be interesting to see where the Greens are. The other day up at Tamworth, there was a unanimous, unanimous resolution from the floor. We had, uh, we had Mercurius Goldstein from the Greens and we also had Rob Tabor as an independent there himself. Unanimous resolution in support of getting rid of this. It'll be interesting to see whether the Greens' resolution in Tamworth is the same as their resolution down here. But I always see owner drivers, and every time you see a rig, you see the pride, the pride that people have in that rig. 
how clean they keep it. I've known people who would not let you into their truck with your shoes on. You had to take them off and uh, go and put your shoes beside and go in your socks. Because they it was a pride that they had in it. You have a look at them, they're clean. They're a reflection of, of their life. It is on the road their home. And they treat it as their home. And uh, and what we have done or what has happened in this parliament, and I, as I said, I never voted for it. We didn't vote for it. Darren didn't vote for it. I didn't vote for it. But what has happened is we've got to make sure that that, they, that that pride that's reflected in their lives and their works is also reflected in the way we support them today in our vote. Uh, it, it, is, it, is, it is absurd when we also uh, I hear, um, and I don't like the insinuation when they continue to bring up the issue of accidents. Let, us, let me remind you that 84 per cent of accidents between a car and a truck, and we wish there were none, but 84 per cent are the car's fault, not the truck's fault. The car's fault. These people are the professional drivers. They spend their whole life on the road. And in an owner driver, it's even, it's even lower still because it's their rig. It's their insurance bill. It's their load that they're dealing with. Uh, let's not start pointing the finger, noting that human error will mean there will always be accidents of some fault, but we are trying to deal with them. Better roads, monitoring logbooks. These are the issues that deal with safety, not sending people broke. This is not an issue about how the scalies operate on the road. This is not an issue about the hours you're supposed to work on the road. This is not an issue about the, the condition of the road. This is an argument determining what a person, an individual, a mum and dad operator can basically pick up so they can, so they can stack up their books, so they can get their rig home, so they can keep themselves financially viable. Um, what it does also, and inevitably does, is it brings us back. And I saw it today when I was listening to the noise of, of the people driving around um, on, on their horns, uh, blow, you know, in their truck, blowing their horns as they go around. I heard, I've heard that before. It's an indication of the chaos that you get from a Labor Green independent government. Yeah. That's what you get. It's an indication of the absolute chaos that we've seen before. The chaos we saw when they closed down the live cattle trade and just said, oh, it's just all of a sudden, northern cattle producers, they say, oh, well, you know, they're just what, indulgent, rich pastoralists. But it absolutely was, it was devastating to the whole cattle industry. Now we've seen it, we've seen it again in owner-operators. Owner-operators in the truck, mum and dad operators in the, in the truck industry. Once more, they've all come down here as a memory for the Australian people just to say, uh, this is yet another, another leftover of the chaos that is, that is created by a government that doesn't actually understand how business works, that doesn't understand how people works, that doesn't look through the ramifications of the decision, and more importantly, even when those faults are discovered and clearly on display for everybody to see, what is worse than everything else is to hear that after they've seen, after they've seen all these people turn up, we've got the Labor Party that come to the dispatch box and stand over there and say, we haven't changed our mind. We haven't changed. We're, we are still willing, we are still willing that if they win the election, that if the Labor Party, the Greens and the Independent, if they win the election, they will bring this back because it is their policy. It is what they believe in. So they can say it was a mistake in the first instance, but it's no longer a mistake. It is their policy. And everybody has to remember that. When you go to the ballot box, the forthcoming election, if the Labor, Greens and the Independents win, they will bring back their policy. I believe that we're going to get this, you know, I hope that we get this thing kicked out. I hope it gets through the Senate. We'll see how we go. I commend the work of all those who've come down here. I hope it's kicked out. But let's remember, we've got a battle today, a battle today to get it kicked out. But we've got a battle in the next month or so to make sure it stays out, and the only way it can stay out is if Labor, the Greens and the Independents stay out of government. 